Hey folks, it's Rob Potter here. Um, I happen to be in Glastonbury in England. I'm with a dear friend of mine who uh, has uh, purchased some uh, interesting equipment and we're gonna go over that in a minute. But as most of you know, I work with Dr. Fred Bell, who was a PhD physicist at the age of 17. And he was studying the shockwave of the atomic bomb and subatomic particle physics in a linear collider at the University of Michigan with Dr. Leonard Katz when he was 15. He was conscripted into the Air Force, ended up working with NASA and uh, JPL and Rockwell. A very advanced physicist, he was dealing with some advanced equipment and calibrating a lot of equipment for the government in underground bases and so forth. Uh, this is in the uh, early 70s, okay? So when I met him, um, Around this time, he had already been contacted by extraterrestrials. We both had experiences with a, a Mahavatar, or uh, what they call the, one of the kind of deathless gurus, um, uh, Babaji, and there's two female, uh, there's a female consort and another one. So it's kind of high interdimensional stuff. And so um, Albert Einstein quoted something called about quantum entanglement, and they called it a, uh, you know, spooky action at a, at a distance. And what this actually goes into, and I'm not a math guy, and uh, these mathematicians like Dan Winter and these people in the physics, you know, Asim Harriman, others can run circles around me, but I'm gonna tell you in a layman's term uh, about quantum physics. And it actually goes down to the actual nature of the universe and the material realms and how it works. It's very simple. Um, everything is connected by a web of life, right? So when you look at the universe, you're breaking things down smaller and smaller in microscopes, and you're going into uh, what constitutes matter. And every time you look and you get smaller and smaller and smaller, you begin to understand the nature of what reality is made of, at least on the physical plane. And this science actually goes into other dimensions too. And I'm gonna, not explain that so much, but right now I want to talk about atomics and uh, physics. So we have um, we have an atom. Let's say we want to look at an atom on the orange, okay? One atom. We go all the way down. We, we, we blow the orange up to the sides of the earth. I'm now standing on an orange. I'm going to pick up an atom. I'm going to reach down and pick one atom up off the orange and I'm gonna show it to you. It's about the size of a cherry. And what that is composed of, there's actually a number of electrons revolving so fast that you can't see them. And inside is uh, a proton and a neutron. So small you can't even see them, okay? So that's an atom. When we want to look into what how these atoms interact, we call it, string theory or wave theory. Those electrons are moving so fast, but they don't move like you think of planets, always moving, always moving. They're actually moving and jumping and they're standing still and dancing. They move and dance, they move and dance, they move and dance, and they are interacting with every other type of atom. And the atoms basically in the atomic elements we have carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen. These are the basic building blocks that we understand on the physical plane right now. And each one has a different number of, you know, hydrogen is one hydrogen and two oxygen. Okay, carbon, you know, so we have these various aggregates that make up our atomic elements. So in the aspect of creation, there's a, a rule that nothing is ever create, created or destroyed. Everything just is. Everything is the creation itself. Where is God? I say, where is God not? God is everywhere in everything. And in the terms of physics, we could say that we are connected subtly on electromagnetic levels and even on the smallest molecules and smallest atoms or the constituents of atoms that we can't even see, we're connected. Everything is exchanging atoms. 
and everything moves in, vibra in vibration and in resonance to each other. So now I want to explain a little bit about quantum. And I'm going to use, because I'm into lasers, and Fred Bell worked a lot with lasers. So here's, when you look at a, a quantum, uh, or what we call a hologram in the quantum universe, a hologram is uh, a picture that you can take of something. And the way this works, let's say I have a statue of the Statue of Liberty. What I will do is I will sh take a laser and I will play it on the front of this statue. So this whole thing is bathed in a red laser light. There's another aspect of the light that bounces off that goes beyond the edge of this statue. And it hits a mirror over here. And that mirror bounces on the back of the statue. And on the back of that statue, there's another laser coming and it touches the back of the, at the laser and it interferes with the other light beam, okay? So now we have a light beam that has interaction on the front and the back of the statue of the Statue of Liberty. I put that light beam onto a photographic plate and it registers a picture. And that picture is that very famous aspect. If you've ever seen a hologram, if you look at it, it looks like it's looking at you no matter what. You could go over here and the Statue of Liberty is still looking at you. So this, this laser, light amplification through stimulated emission of radiation, laser, has information. What is information? Light is information. The longer the waveform of light, it has more knowledge, more information. So we are all simply fractals of the divine light or the aspect of creation in the mind of God. God is not a person or a thing. God is everything. When we look at uh, the universe and atheists will say, where is God? And I say, where is God not? God is everywhere and everything. So let's look at the whole God. God is the isness. Your mind can't conceive or understand. You can experience God. Any attempt to describe God is really hiding your ignorance in pompous expression, in science terms or math or whatever it is. It just is. Uh, extraterrestrials call it the isness. You could call it the unknowable. You could call it the unknowable, the knower, the knowing, the known. That is the supreme creator. And somehow, we look into the universe and we see now billions and trillions and worlds and galaxies without end. In the theory of the hierarchy or the theosophy of understanding what is called the logos or the word of creation, because in the beginning was the word, and word is a sound and a frequency manifested, and then light was created. So everything is just moving in the isness, and it's literally a sound. So I know I'm taking you down on a trail. It'd be nice to have some graphics on this. But we have this isness. And this isness has created these galaxies. These galaxies themselves are a reflection of the infinite mind of God, as above, so below. So we have billions and trillions of galaxies and billions and billions and trillions and unknowable numbers um, of creators. They've been called creator suns or archangels. They're not masculine or feminine. They're divine creative principles that within themselves have manifested uh, beings or atoms of themselves. And this is the entire galaxy. We can only see the physical plane of that galaxy. And yet there are multiple dimensions and worlds beyond what we can see. In the term of physics, um, when you look at an atom and the electron, each electron contains within it an, a smaller atom from the astral plane. There are 49 of them in each electron. The Tibetans call this the 49 fires of Agni. 
Now, if I'm on the real physical plane of the astral, which to us is dense, we can't see it or touch it, but within that own density, that world uh, experience of physicality. They have their own set of rules and laws. So if I'm on that world and I'm looking at an atom of an electron, we could call it electron, on the astral plane, there's an even more refined element, which would be called uh, the mental plane. And the mental plane has a uh, reality and a world and a construct. And on that plane, there's even more refined levels. So you have a physical, an astral, a mental and a plane. And that's divided into another plane that would they call the buddhic plane, a higher aspect of the mental plane. And then on that dimension, those electrons of 49 would have another one called the causal plane. That's a fifth, that would be called the, the fifth density. And it has uh, uh, a more refined level, and it's called the optic plane, which is the plane of soul, and then the logoic plane, where everything is connected. So if everything is connected, and all the science experience, experiments that they found, um, everything is connected instantaneously. There is no time and space. Everything just is, and you are part of everything. And when you understand this aspect of reality and physics, you realize you're all connected and therefore there's no division between you and your brother. And the message of Christ becomes clear that love God with all your heart, love the creator, love the source of the beingness of life and know that every particle of existence, every other being you see is your brother and sister and part of you. We have been hoodwinked and misled to believe that we are separate from each other, that we have enemies, that we have competition. This is an illusion where mankind has been separated. And now mankind is coming together. And it's very interesting to me because I've been aware of this and the Venusians had asked me and told me when I was asking them about some of my pyramid systems and products and the stargates that I create, utilizing pyramids, floating ground Tesla coils and plasma generators uh, in combination with uh, lasers, and uh, sound, sound, light, and color are very instrumental to our creation. And everything is out of resonance. And so to bring things back into resonance, they gave this design of this receptor that many of you have seen, you can look at it on my website. There are 144 pyramids in a Fibonacci spiral. And on the back is a Castorgan wave trap. And what this device does is it has a parabolic lens that is set to a frequency that is a replication of your DNA. So your DNA is replicating all the time, but we have all this distortion through mankind's abuse of power and the lack of thoughts and the way our thinking has been railroaded and we've been hidden from the light. The dark has tried to block the light from humanity. It's never been there. It's never that we couldn't access it. It's that we haven't paid attention to it. We're not using our mind and our consciousness responsibly. So now I'm going to share with you uh, kind of a, a series of synchronistic events that have brought me into uh, sharing with you the advanced quantum healing systems that are coming out now in terms of the scalar mechanics of balancing and harmonizing every aspect of your multi-dimensional self, especially on the physical plane now. Because the dark force is being defeated in the higher dimensions and the earth is becoming liberated and we're hearing quantum this and quantum that, the AI system. I'm not, not the AI financial system, everyone's focused on money. Let's talk about the quantum system and the power of love of God's creation. Okay, that's what's really important. So, um, Fred Bell worked with a woman named Sandra Michael. I had interviewed her on my website. She has a system called the EES system. I've never experienced it. I don't know the validity of it. It seems to be apparently working for many people. Okay. Uh, uh, several months before that, uh, I had been exposed to a quantum healing system developed by a Russian guy. And this device basically will read your, your aura, your, you put your hand on a plate 
and it gives a feedback. It analyzes your resonance in every organ, in every frequency, in every endocrine gland, and every system of your body. You're, you're a, a multi-dimensional being of multiple bodies. You have the largest organ on your body is your skin. You have a skeletal body, muscular body, a nervous body, a lymphatic body, an organ body, a, a, a fluid body. You have uh, tubular bodies. Everything is comprised and interacting in a perfect dance of resonance. And you qualify that through your free will as an individual soul, how the energies of the universe flow through you. And they flow through you in a pattern. You have a pineal gland where the cosmic energies of electromagnetism, electromagnetism come into your head and they run through a bunch of series of channels, which are your organ meridians, okay? And you have another energy that comes in through the base of your body and that's electrical energy. And you are this living, breathing, if you could see your aura, I've seen it on occasion, it has various colors and different striations. And I recommend you read The Keys of Enoch by J.J. Hertak. You learn about the, the Zohar body, the epikinetic body. There's various aggregates of these electromagnetic frequencies that have been known by the hermetics and the alchemists throughout time and space, or what is known as the Keys of Arya, the manifestation of the Adamic man and the extraterrestrial knowledge, which has been lost and hidden. And now this is coming forward. So I want you to think of yourself as an orc egg, okay? And you are really, on one level, you're nothing more than a nameless cluster of feelings held together by the binding force of life. And when you die, those energies dissipate. Your physical body returns to dust and goes nothing. And you have an astral or emotional body that will go into the environment around you and inhabit maybe even flowers or different things. So we're all connected and being recycled. There is an immortal aspect of your soul that is part of God. And that at, at the time of transition or death goes and has a rest in the infinite time space continuum. And then the soul is reborn and gathers aggregates of consciousness to express itself in its next level of life evolution, which is most likely for most of us is another physical form. Okay. So you have these, this wonderful dance of resonance, but there are different things that influence your body's frequencies. Okay. And I'm going to break this down for you. It's not that difficult. One is you have the magnetic conditions at the time of conception. Okay, when did your parents, when did the ova meet the sperm and where were you? People want to say astrology is of the devil. No, astrology, astronomy, and, um, and alchemy plants were all considered the same science because everything is in relationship to one another and there are called paths of order of the natural order of the universe. And as one learns in the mystery schools, there are various ways that these all interrelate. And I'll give this to you in, I talked about the 12 organ meridians. You also have what's called a governing uh, vessel and a conception vessel. So you have these 12 organs and, and those two combine to make the 13th, which is the octave. In the musical scale, you have seven notes uh, in the musical scale. And if you take the half notes, eight is the octave. Right? But you actually have, there's subfrequencies there that give you 13 as the octave in the body's auric level. So now you begin to see this harmony and this divine play. There are actually organs and muscles that correspond to various muscle meridians. When someone does uh, a, a certain it's called the scorpion in a yoga position where you lay down, you put your hands under here and lift up. Actually, the muscles that you utilize are related to the um, um, uh, kidney meridian. Or, so the, I'm sorry, there's different, there's different uh, organs that you're working on that work, work with different muscle groups. The science of yoga is the contraction and the relaxation of muscle groups in an organized fashion to bring the life channels and force into your body. So um, the 
Genetics of your parents is one of them. You also have, as I said, the magnetic conditions at the time of conception and the magnetic conditions at time of birth. And this relates to the planets. The planets have magnetic effect and are part of how your body creates and is part of the interaction on a cosmic level of the vibration and frequencies, okay? So you also have liquids and foods digested. And uh, we're having a lot of problems here in our food supply chain and the interlopers or intruders have misled us and are poisoning us slowly to keep us in ignorance and our vibration and frequency low. We should be living thousands of years by nature but by the interference or the assaults on the lower personality vehicle, we have very short lifespans. So it's important that we manage uh, the air we breathe is another big source of energy. It's, it's actually uh, one of the quickest uh, ways to die is by losing your air. The, the, the fastest is, is by losing blood. So we have these various uh, aspects of our body. So magnetic conditions at time of birth, genetics of the parent, both parents at time of birth. We have the food we eat, and then we have the nature of environment are responsible for our condition. If we live near a radioactive fallout or pollution or near a power line or a 5G tower, or if our parents or if our mother's near one when we're born, it's going to interfere with our uh, gestation period, which is actually part of a, a large cycle of life in developing and creating your body as your soul inhabits your mother. And all of these things combined for that. Now, the number one source of our feelings, does anyone know? Of course, I'll tell you because this is a recording and you can't answer. It's your thoughts. What is your intention? And our attention is misled and hoodwinked and cajoled into ideas of competition, of fear and lack, into systems and cycles that are not natural in God's law, and we're not in touch with nature. So all of these things combine to have, create an assault on the body, genetically altered foods, those things that they put in you, poisons, uh, nanoparticles coming in from the air, and one of the worst is really radiation. Everyone talks about global warming, it's solar warming, and one of the reasons our planet when you look at it from outer space, if you do an electrical look at our planet, our, our ionosphere is 2,000 degrees. Oh, we can't live on Venus because it's 800, 900 degrees. That was an electronic look. You couldn't live on Earth if you were to measure it the same way. This is how they hide the truth about life on the planets. So we have this uh, intense uh, ecosphere of ionosphere, mesosphere, troposphere, stratosphere. It's all there. And what happens is, is the body needs to live in harmony with nature. And we have allowed ourselves to start destroying nature. We have become so involved in money, we've been taught to believe that if we put poisons in the food, they'll look prettier longer and we can make money. We have to stop the preservatives. We have to go from, from hydroponic garden to table. We don't need to transport our food. We don't need to denature it. As we become more sensitive, we become healthier. Now, I want to bring all this back, the quantum entanglement, the understanding of how everything is connected on the scientific level, down to these technologies of the EES system, the one I learned from a, a, a Russian guy named uh, Alex. Uh, and this, this machine basically will read your aura and it has a very graphic image. It shows every part of your body and it gives different colors for different parts of your body. What is out of whack? Do you have viruses going on? Do you have uh, congenital issues? Whatever the thing is, it kind of grades you and scales you. There's another technology called, uh, I think it's called the Hopewell, where you put your fingers on a plate. It's a very similar technology and it determines the strength of your chakras. And the chakras are endocrine glands, which are force central at etheric levels that direct the prana or life force into your body. Now, endocrine glands secrete hormones. Hormones are the first unit of biochemistry that possess consciousness. So your body is literally a symphony of sound. And when you are divided and your, your aura and your endocrine glands are off balance, um, it's dissonance, it's inharmonious. 
And I'm going to switch here to an interesting tidbit or fact of the Pleiadian spaceships. They're spaceships. They have giant uh, landing ports that are like, like uh, they're like the Hollywood Bowl. They're resonant cavities or like a nautilus. And when the spaceships come down, the sound that you hear on a spaceship is keyed to the auric signature of the pilot. And so sometimes they come down and they use their thoughts and they make the sound of the spaceships like a symphony or a harmony. A very wonderful uh, aspect of a blending of art and science and transportation. It's incredible. So we look at us on the earth and our auras are going up and down and we're, we're out of balance. When the Pleiadians or an extraterrestrial civilization come in contact with humanity, most of humanity's thoughts are fractured and their, their, their minds are not on God. And they, they call it or extension. They don't really enjoy being around us so much. And the higher levels of our society and worlds, like places in Tibet and some of these more harmonious native cultures of the world, which have been uh, genocide and attempt to destroy them, um, those people live in very harmonious lives. They may be very simple technologically, and they may make their houses out of mud, but they have a deep spiritual connection, and they're in unity with God and the spiritual consciousness. Now, fast-forwarding to our time, mankind is becoming awake, and on a, a, a hidden, more esoteric level on the planet, the battle for the light and the dark has been taking place at a very high level behind the scenes. I can tell you that the light forces have won. The dark forces are banished from this planet or in the very process of the final end game. It's like the very end. It's a mop up operation now and mankind must step forward into creating a new society. And we're going to have to throw out all of our programming and misunderstanding of what's going on. Uh, and we have to create new systems, especially a new financial system. There's already one in place through divine intervention. It's been given. It's going to be called the Kim system, the global restoration program. And it is going to be, some people call it the financial reset or Nassara Jassara. The idea and the concept of those things are absolutely correct. Everyone will have equal distribution of the world's resources. But in order for the galactics to help us, we must do several things. One is to end wars. We must have a uh, equal distribution of the world's resources. We have to stop killing life on this planet, not only ourselves and others, but destroying nature. We have to have supply chains of, that don't have poison in them. We have to outlaw these technologies that we don't need. The scarcity and lack, the plastics, the poisons that come from the attrition and the art are our creation of the various products that we think we need. We need to come into a more quiet, harmonious, peaceful tribal life experience surrounded by nature's beauty, but we can have high technology. And that's going to bring me in to this next technology. And uh, this is, I'm going to have you look over here. This is a scalar wave technology, much like the pyramid systems, a little more advanced. And what this does, these, these two boxes there, I'm going to show you there's one over here and they work and they create like a they create like an envelope or a bubble of scalar field energy that has a, a very balanced and healing energy and over here if you come a little closer look down here there's a little place where you can broadcast something in there for instance i could put in you know you have stem cells which are very expensive but I could put the stem cell in here and reuse it again and again. It would give the essence of it in here. There's another as another technology like this called photoporation. I could put a crystal ball in here. I could shoot an ultraviolet laser and it would cause the skin to bioluminesce. In this particular case, I'm putting this balanced frequency protector of the DNA or my nuclear receptor in here. Which this particular uh, one has a, a, a lemon quartz in it. And as I sit in between these two over here, I'm in a bubble of a scalar wave frequency that is providing a balance on uh, a basic program. So this is the third, the, 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 the second system I've seen. And there's another one called Therify, by, uh, created by Dan Winter, who is a friend of Fred Bell's. 
and a very advanced scientist. Fred Bell knew some great scientists. Another one that he kept under wraps was um, uh, David Adair, who's running the Morocco space program. Okay, so I'm gonna have uh, the camera come over here for me for just a second here, uh, over on this side. And we're gonna look at this other technology. Now the Therify system, uh, I'm gonna share, I may have another uh, system, another thing on that, but there's one a device down in uh, Northern California in a town called Redway. It starts off anchoring it with a 2,178 pound uh, quartz crystal from Brazil. Quartz crystals amplify thought forms. And when you put a scalar field in and your intentions are good, if you're focusing in on your body and connecting, the resonance and feedback of these scalar systems is kind of like what we would call a guru or a Christ or a high consciousness being, an extraterrestrial. And so if you look at um, uh, what the Hindus call the Nada Shringa, it's the neural life illumination force that's transmitted by an enlightened being. And there are various levels of this. Very few are at the highest level, like Sri Yukteswar, my, uh, you know, uh, uh, Lahari Mahasa, uh, Babaji, Sri Yukteswar, Paramahansa Yogananda, um, and other gurus like Satya Sai Baba, of course, Jesus Christ, uh, Gautama Buddha, these are some that we know that were very enlightened beings. And they, they all taught the same thing, the power of love and truth and the right relationship, that everything is related and that it doesn't have to be so hard. We don't have to complicate things. We don't have to live in disharmony. But now the extraterrestrial technologies that will be given to us very shor shortly when we achieve those things I mentioned, no more wars, a true dem democracy, a republic, so to speak, um, non-destruction of life forms, uh, not destroying the nature of life forms, and to uh, live in accordance with God's laws or the Creator's laws. Okay, so here's another one that my friend has, who's holding the camera, has here. And this is called Spooky 2, a quick guide. So this is a scalar wave technology over here that you saw that's broadcasting a frequency. And this is also connected to uh, a program that is connected in a computer. And actually, this particular technology, I have some of my DNA here on this plate. It's giving me an analysis of my body. And when I have that technology um, analyzed, it's gonna tell me what frequencies I have out of sync and can automatically provide the balancing frequencies. This technology is not as advanced as what Fred Bell was trying to create when they killed him, but this technology is very advanced. And this is called a generator box that, that can send this frequency out. It's a bunch of ports that we connected to many things. Now, I'm gonna show you, I have some of my DNA is in this box. I can put this in here. And after I'm analyzed, I can put this information in here. This information can broadcast at a distance. Sp you, know, sp you know, spooky quantum mechanics, at spooky uh, uh, entanglement at a distance. So they say, is the world reality is solid? When the particles are holding still and with our attention believing that, it seems solid. But in reality, everything is moving and it's not really solid. It's, is it a solid thing? Is it a wave? Or is it a particle? And it fluctuates between the two. This would be called the illusion or maya of our physical plane existence. Um, so it's really both. But where we place our attention is very important. So if we place our attention on our endocrine glands, realizing that we are like a radio beacon signal in resonance with God or with a higher frequency 
or even a great teacher who inspires us on multi-dimensional levels, and not only multi-dimensional, but in our thought process and understanding of various things. So this device, very complicated, has a very deep program. It connects to a computer, and I have not uh, really understood this. I'm helping my friend basically analyze this system, but this has a whole bunch of different things. Many people have seen on my website, my Promise Light Watch. Now, this device here uh, can have the scalar information connected into this while laser light emits in, into here. As I said, light is information, and in the spectrum of light, the sun rises at red, which gets you going. That's your pituitary gland and waking up. And it, as it gets into the nighttime, it goes into blue and ultraviolet indigo. So that's when things calm down. So there's a whole science of the frequencies of sound, light, and color. And uh, we'll, we'll show you how that works. So, so there's a laser. This is one. This actually can hook in as well and puts laser night up in your, in your nose. You have a pineal and pituitary gland and right across the blood barrier with a laser light, this will help increase your resonant frequency and get into your cavities. There's another device here that's connected to this. This one's kind of cool. It's a more advanced kind of system, but they're, they're little tubes that go in here and these will emit frequencies. All kinds of diseases, everything is all mapped out and this can provide a counter resonance to bringing you into a balance or homeostasis. There are many other versions of this. I'm not sure how the EES systems works, but I can tell you the Therify system works incredible. And these are cathode ray tubes invented by Dan Winter that have a bioplasma and there are specific noble gases within these tubes and many other technologies. I don't wanna do any injustice to him um, that would uh, uh, confuse you on that. So this particular device can read and analyze and this device can send it out. So the final one that they have here on this, there's even more, uh, is these are a TENS unit that you can connect in here with the frequencies and it can stimulate and strengthen your muscles. There's also another uh, added feature. So they can rescan and rescan. You can see your improvement. And with the Hopewell aspect of reading your aura, you can actually get a, a number readout where you can see how strong each endocrine gland is and how it works. So I just want to say that uh, the pyramid systems that I have, the Pleiadians had told me that uh, the pyramid system does not produce tachyons, but it can attract tachyons. Tachyons are faster than light particles. They move forward and backward in time and space. So there's a tremendous amount of amazing technology that's coming. And uh, we're gonna probably be under stress a little bit as people begin to wake up to what's been happening on the planet. And as we get together and work together uh, in cooperation, instead of uh, feeling uh, separated from each other and working against each other, we can be working together in harmony. And these frequencies like this can actually be kind of like, you know, uh, a symphony. Like you think you can sing a cappella, but you don't really sing that well. But if you had the Beatles playing around you, gave you a microphone, and you're singing next to Paul McCartney and John Lennon and the gang, or you name it, your frequency, or Ariana Grande, someone who's singing right on key and pitch, perfect pitch, James Taylor, Elton John, these type of people, you would sing very good too. So what we're doing here is we're affecting the environment, which can entrain the body to develop and reconnect to its original DNA pattern with technology such as this, the nuclear receptor and lasers. So um, I'm looking for investors to create uh, a type of healing center that will include crystals, lasers, various quantum systems, including uh, the various other natural uh, technologies. There's a company called Filmary Distribi. It's a true alchemical company. It's probably, they told me there's only 33 true alchemists on the planet, ranging in the age from six, 800 years old to very, uh, you know, maybe even 80, looking 35. And this is a very special extraction process of products. I've been learning about them. They're very expensive because they must be made in controlled environments. This is the true alchemy of harvesting plants at certain times of the new moon, 
of gathering dew at sacred sites in the morning when it's particularly viscous, like uh, egg yolk, and providing this in closed capsules, heaving it in what they call the spagyric uh, extraction process and the coagulation of the various uh, elements of salt, mercury, sulfur, all of these, I would call them humors of the body. So I just want you to, to really start thinking positively because these technologies will eventually range into advanced extraterrestrial technologies, which were given to the earth. The Venusians gave these technologies, healing technologies to the government, but they withheld them from us. And their time is done. And now mankind, these ancient technologies are gonna be bought forward to mankind uh, because we've actually paid for them. We're at the ability to use them. They also will be giving us advanced technology and communication like a uh, standing wave communication technology that uh, Nikola Tesla himself a Venusian placed here as an orphan on a Serbian uh, uh, Orthodox uh, church uh, developed the many inventions that he developed will be refined and be allowed to be given to humanity. We can get rid of our nuclear power stations. We can have very harmonious technologies that are not destructive in nature. They're not nuclear radiation. We're going to advance tremendously. And everyone wants those technologies now, but we have to come to a growth in our spiritual consciousness. So this is the primary message of the Venusians, is for us to treat each other kindly, with patience, and to see everyone as our brother and sister. And we don't have to fight each other and complain and argue that my God's better, or I know more, or this is the way. We can all synergistically and harmoniously create a new world. Imagine a financial system where the money is not placed into wars and bombs and destruction, but it's actually put in towards the people. And that's the only way that the money is going to be made available for people who want Nassar and Jasara. Oh, I'm going to get a million dollars. Well, so what would you do with a million dollars? Do you think you really could manage a healing project? Do you know everything? You're going to need a construction crew. You're going to need experts in colonics and acupuncture and psychological evaluation and various uh, therapies of advanced technology that can address all the sense of the lymph and a true understanding of the balance and how life flows. This is coming, this is available now. So um, if you want to get excited, get excited about what's coming on the earth. Do not focus on the fear and the negativity of that stuff. They have no more power, it's done. They would never allow, we would never allow them to force us with that. They would, we'd be taking them out. In fact, the galactics have been demolecularizing them in a technology called Mohijnar. When they are going and violating the creator's law, they're being vaporized. Why couldn't they do that before? Because according to galactic law, this was run by a higher dimensional beings within the planet who defaulted in their just administration during when the planet fell. And according to those laws and rules, they own this planet as a protectorate for over 16,000 years. Their influence has been very negative throughout the galaxy for a long time. An artificial intelligence hive mind of graphene and nanoparticles, dark essence built on suffering from lower, lower frequency of consciousness is in the antimatter universe is over now. There's actually God has created divine justice. There's there's free will, and then there's balance or justice. And justice is uh, when those criminals are now arrested. These beings live millions of years. Their time is done and their influence is over. So focus on the innate nature of the light within all creation. That is called the Christ consciousness. That Christ consciousness has been around long before the avatar or the great Maha avatar, Jesus Christ. So understand that all the teachers, all the religions are teaching the same message. And it's time we stop fighting each other and come together in peace and harmony. And a lot of these ideas and some of these technologies and many people who feel and talk this way will be at my summer conference. 
the summer in Mount Jasta. We're going to be doing a lot of information. I'm going to be revealing a lot of direct information from the Venusians to let people understand it. A lot of people don't believe what I'm sharing. It's not about me. I'm just a postman delivering a message. But I can tell you that my website is like lightning. You see a little spark, you may be interested. But if you get into it and you start looking and listening to the messages, it hits you like a clap of thunder. And I promise you, the truth of the nature of God and the power of love is going to be revealed on this planet. And if it's not, if you don't move with the changes and try to hold on to the old system of Republican and Democrat and fiat currency and scarcity and lack, instead of cooperation, we can unify sociology, a communal right relationship, a democracy, a republic, all of these things can be held in a common world trust that can be distributed in terms of a communism, communal relationship in terms of transportation, shelter, food, um, communication, education, these things we all share in common. We can all approach them different ways, but money can be provided by the world system. No one understood how the money was given. The money was given by the intruders or the fallen angels would give the power to their elite parasitic bottom of the barrel humanity inhabiting uh, oligarchy of criminals of unspeakable power and unspeakable horrors. We are now free. The Christ energy, the crystalline time is here and we are now to move into a new age. I strongly suggest people research Kim Gogan or the KMS monetary system and the global restoration plan. Can you imagine militaries around the world start cleaning up plastic as we create new technologies? Can you imagine sticking straws into the ocean, desalinating the ocean, desalinating the ocean, providing abundant water everywhere? Restoration of our soil and outlawing of Monsanto's GMOs burning those crops, the false poisons that are put into us in the allopathic medical system. The world is bright indeed, my friends. So uh, get your shades, uh, be excited, and let's work together. The victory of light is here. We have to open the window shades and see it, embrace it. There are some things that are indicating we may get a little worse before it gets better. As the old systems break away, as on a cymatic plate where the sounds move the sand into different geometric shapes, in the, between the frequencies there's chaos, but they reform into something new and beautiful and stable. And mankind must come together uh, despite your religious, social, and cultural differences. Imagine you can get over this, the visas and the borders and try to keep people out. Imagine we announce there's no more uh, income tax. Now, every purchase can support it. We can have, we're going to need millions of dentists because people need dental work. So there's going to be money for that. There's going to be money for restoring the planet, for taking down the negative technologies and recycling and uh, new methods of teaching that we can flourish in. So I wanted to get this positive message to you by sharing some of these great technologies here, um, my pyramid systems, these uh, various technologies that raise your frequency. It's not so much about diagnosing what's wrong uh, and these more advanced ones there, but bathing yourself in a harmonious energy and bathe yourself in the light of your own mind that's connected to the mind of Almighty Creator. Silence your thoughts and listen to the answers after you intend and pray to God for a lie, uh, uh, allegiance and alliance to his living word of truth, light, and justice. Let righteousness and peace, peace kiss, kiss each other in our actions. And if you look to the right and the good and the things that you do, your work will be justified. So don't be afraid to lose your job because there's going to be a lot more new things going on. So I just want to say God bless you all. Victory to the light. And I send all my love to my brothers and sisters. Thank you so much.